between these two has stayed pretty consistent for throughout the game's history for the most part, but the way that they've evolved from like era to era of the game, that they never really play this, it feels like they don't play the same matchup twice, you know? Uh, I can definitely experience that because both both Dill and Ray are always trying to evolve their own game plans. Like, as we see Ray picking up a completely new character in Banjo and seeing how that affects his uh, his play as Pautena and how he uh, approaches some matchups. And Dill just kind of the... Like, I, don't, well, I won't say as much of a scientist as, uh, as Sinji seems to be, but he's definitely one of the smarter players in the New York repertoire as his, like, his conversions and his neutral game just never seem to let up. At the same time, though, I, it feels like he comes up with a game plan and tries to make the most of that game plan. And if Utopian Ray is able to adapt to that, then that's when he all of a sudden is able to break through and get these huge Nair strings just to absolutely dominate the neutral. But as we're seeing right now, it's pretty back and forth, which yeah, is surprising given the two characters. And you know, normally you see one of them gain advantage for quite a bit, but right now they're kind of trading. Yeah, especially on a stage like Battlefield with the platform extensions that can come up with both both of the characters' up airs and the uh, full extension of Powhatan's combos. But at such a high percent, we're not going to see many of that. Un oh, no. Say, say one was right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Frozen and I had like a whole thing where like, that guy's no. is not what? This huh? isn't real. Hold on. It only works on Ridley because I guess we don't like Ridley anymore. Listen, all the Ridley mains that you got the character in Smash. <laughs> now you have to live with that. Oh, uh, so that's that's the Dill classic. I was, I was talking with him at a uh, at a monthly in um, in up. Oh, hello, Doggo. In where's it's on Fifty Second Street, and he's always said to any sort of aspiring Rob mains, it's like, hey, how do you get out of disadvantages, Rob? He's so big. I feel like I just get hit forever. He said, you have. Your upbeat is flexible enough to where you can just rise until your opponent has used all their resources to hit you and then move until they can't follow you anymore. It's just, it's a linear way of thinking about it, but it's its a amazingly simple way to get out of disadvantage and how he applies it is just consistently baffling. Now we see Dill with the lead, and Dill is one of those players where when he has a lead, it is just so brutal for whoever he's playing against. He just might be able to take this stock entirely. Doesn't quite get that air dodge punish, and the trade from Utopian Ray, he maybe not, might, he might not feel too great about taking 137%, but at the very least, they're on even stock footing. Never mind. <laughs> That's another stock gone for Utopian Ray. Now he pretty much has to, like, playing behind against Sinji. Uh, sorry, against, against, true with Sinji as well, but against Dill is hard enough, but be an entire stock like this, he has to just like dynamically change up the way he plays, has to really get conversions. Maybe has to, you know, not play quite as safe if he wants to actually make a comeback, at least for this game one. I feel like both of these uh, both of these players have a similar style of like how they try to win, which is it's it's like a chokehold. They're trying to suffocate you and like hold you on ledge until you just like can't do anything anymore. Even if it takes so, like so many interactions. Okay, you didn't die. <laughs> but now Ray is kind of like I can't even. <laughs> He's still alive. He's but... still going. I don't think. Oh, no, no, again! It... Oh no, he has no fuel left. He can't do it again. Okay. He's he's got to charge up that fuel. You can see the meter on his spine. But 125 after after that in whole exchange and a couple false finishes and that's the real one. Move into game two with a 1 0 lead going to yeah. Dill and his robot. So, even though that game looks very dominant at the end, you know, for Dill, it's important to remember that they were neck and neck at that first stock. And as soon as that first stock was taken, that's when the entire nature of the match changed. So, as we move into game two and game three, and however many there are, it, the opening of it just matters so much. How they start off the game dictates who has the lead for that first stock. And I'm not going to say, like, if you take the first stock, you win, but the amount of work that needs to be put in for either player, if they end up a stock down, just it, you're already playing against, you know, at a really high level. And then to just, you know, all of that extra energy to figure out how to kill your opponent when they're just trying to do damage to you, it just becomes, oh, they, they have to really play around that first stock. It'll be interesting to see how he how he changes with his with his kill approaches to taking Rob's stock because since Rob is so much heavier than Palutena, there's a little bit more work that needs to be done on the side of Palutena. As we see the pick to FD, 
minimizing the platforms and the opportunities for land, to land for Rob and forcing him to go onto a ledge, where hopefully Ray can make uh, a lot more big plays. Let's go top. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> wow, 42%. A pretty strong 42 pin Ray, but beyond that, he also has him at the ledge. And you know, you mentioned before how recovering high for Rob is really important. It's one of the pivotal parts for him to get out of disadvantage. But on a stage like FD, going high has its own risks involved. And I want to see if maybe he's going to go low more, or if Utopian Ray is able to capitalize on those higher recoveries. One of the common things that I see, not only just Dill, but a lot of insanely good Rob players, is that they won't, they'll hover around ledge, but they won't snap to it. They'll wait and wait and see what option that you're eventually going to throw out. Maybe it'll be a down tilt. Maybe you'll, they'll start charging uh, up smash. And once they know that, it, that's that's so good. <laughs> once they know that they have an opening, they'll fly up with top or fair in order to beat you back instead of just restricting themselves to the options brought to them by grabbing ledge. But as like as you mentioned before, Dill taking the first stock can put him at such a huge advantage. We have to see how how Ray adjusts to being such a, oh. at a spontaneous disadvantage. That was a fantastic rollout. Oh. If he had been trapped in that further, he could have taken another 40. Oh, but you said he was floating around just below the ledge, not quite grabbing it. That is the risk involved. There are two big risks to it. One, sometimes your opponent can't hit you if they have Palu hitboxes. And the other one, and this might come up later, is that if your opponent doesn't do anything, it does drain Rob's fuel. And he can't stay there forever. And there are times where I've seen Dill hover on the ledge, hover on the ledge, then he goes there, and then he gets knocked off stage immediately, and then he's forced to recover linear because he doesn't have that resource the same way. It's high risk, high reward, but at this kind of stage, you really need, sometimes you need to push. Sometimes you need to push the envelope in order to get some of these wins, especially on players like Utopian Ray, who aren't gonna like. They're not gonna cut him some slack just because he doesn't have any fuel. But Rob's up air, of course, taking taking that stock. <laughs> that was actually great. He knew that the gyro was coming, shield, and then as soon as he saw it, it's like, all right, now she'll go. Okay, well, I guess Rob always ends up coming back with the top, because it seemed like Ray was trying to feign, like he was going to grab it, but it still worked out in Dill's favor. Did he? Oh, yeah, that looked weird, sorry. The Nair, they kind of like passed through him with Nair as Powhatan went for the back air. Uh, regardless. I like that patience from Token Ray. You can see that Dill now, he's taking a bit more of an aggressive ledge trapping strategy, throwing out hitbox after hitbox after hitbox. And Token Ray just noticed the exact opening in those moves and was able to get back to stage, but he ends up being off once more. That's another game for Dill. And did he lose his jump somewhere? He didn't, like, he exposed the flame in order to get him off, but he must have realized, like, oh, I, I don't have my jump. maybe a miss and put it up the. That's uh. possibly what it could have been. Uh, but. Unfortunate way to end, but I'd say Dill, even though that was uh, Utopian Ray's counterpick, it felt like he was actually in more of a command in that game. Uh, mainly because the first stock wasn't even. No, yeah, I That first stock, he, he got that really, really solid. It was like the gyro to forward smash. <laughs> and after getting that, he was basically just ahead the entire game. So. But it looks like we are going to be getting FD for game three. It probably wasn't a stage issue. Utopian Ray needs to just, you know, reevaluate how he's approaching this. I would actually think that, I thought that maybe he would have gone Banjo even, but no, it looks like he yeah. knows that the character can do it for him. The and Kyle Lutena works well in this matchup, so he just needs to try again, perhaps a different angle. We'll see what he has up his sleeve this time around. Oh, no. Oh, and that's a quick 54. I was about to mention that he did start off game two really hot with a extended jab, uh, like extended rapid jab to get him to 42. But this this game seems to be starting just a little bit different as uh, as Dill just keeps putting, putting, uh, putting Ray on the coals. That spacing was fantastic. The way he weaved just past that up air. And I think that that's a big part of how he's going to do a little bit better this game. Just dodging those moves, outspacing it, Palo, never mind. Oh man, wow. that was ridiculous. Being able to capitalize on that gyro placement so well. Dill is looking like he's gonna take this set three. Oh, it's gonna be a, there has to be just a complete total turnaround for Utopian Ray at this point. Right. Maybe he can punish a little bit of a misinput there. Down throw back air, uh, the, the common uh, Palutena bread and butters. 
as he waits a little bit, but gets a well-timed air dodge in order to snap right back to the ledge. He actually misses the neutral getup punish. That could possibly truly cost him here. He has to find another win in neutral, and then he has to somehow convert that into a kill. Just waiting it out and using the incredibly uh, low low shield, uh, or is it? It's like minus two on shield or something, and using that as well as a cross up to get right back onto stage. Though the high percent puts him right back off. Good tech. Just like no no words there. Just a good tech. He almost dies from the up air. Hop is in such a good posi uh, good position for for Dill to keep the pressure on. <laughs> All right, that was a great get up attack amazing. to get the pressure off of him. But as you can see, this is now Dill is getting comfortable. He is both playing to his lead and also being comfortably aggressive. What a horrifying combination that Dil that uh, Ray has to try and get past here. Finally, cracks open that first stock. Dash attack is going to be enough to finish it, but. He's going to have to come up with a lot more for this next one. He's trapped at the ledge once again. He's forward airs these moves, but Utopian Ray will make, gain a little bit of ground getting out of the corner, but then Dill goes in for a grab. It's, it's just the way that he's mixing up his aggression and the way that he goes in for grabs, it just it seems to be perfectly dominating Utopian Ray at this moment. Yeah, it, he's made the ledge not feel safe, and apparently now it's like not even not even the skies are safe. He's just gonna push down with dash grab, but like, like you mentioned, that spontaneous change in how he's approaching uh, the uh, the idea of punishing uh, Ray as he's when he's open. For a while, it was with down tilts, and now it's, it's shifted to grab, and that's an unfortunate fastball too far. Oh, I thought that was his last talk. Oh my god, I'm. In the future. <laughs> it, I mean, this, it, this match feels like it's going so fast. Yeah. And I mean, the other two matches are going pretty quickly, but the aggression between these two has really turned off, which is kind of strange for uh, Dill. Normally, he slows things down, especially when he's ahead by a lot, but he's comfortable doing so because he feels like Utopian Ray is scared enough that... You know, if he's throwing out all these moves, he won't be able to, he'll panic. Yeah, he's definitely beaten a lot of respect for Rob's kit into into Utopian Ray, so he's giving him a lot more wiggle room to get away with a lot more things and a lot more unsafe things, but that right there might, might put a little more bite into Utopian Ray. I think the fear has sort of dissipated. He's starting to get a little bit more comfortable. He's already 54% on that one combo. That's not the entirety of a Rob stock, but here he's off stage, recovers low, Yes. And he gets out of the corner. Okay. Utopian Ray had a huge boost of momentum from that. He now has the lead for the first time in this set, pretty much. And let's see if he can oh, 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 convert it to his first what game it. on the board. Because what right now he has no jump and he's trapped on the corner. This is just... He, he had the jump scouted out. And he went for that fair, but it was a little bit too high. What a dash forward and into that dash attack. Not letting, not letting Dill set up anymore. Just flashy little parry, air dodge. Oh, no, he just went right down and go, but the air dodge to ledge was scouted out. Something that Dill had done not only earlier in the set, but earlier in that game. It's the tendency of Dill to flutter a little bit more and then commit to an air dodge to ledge, which is covered perfectly by that down tilt and killed with the back air. And that was just fantastic comeback from Utopian Ray. And I think that like he just stopped being scared was a big yeah. part of it. He's like, like, I honestly think that SDing on that second to last stock wiped his mind clear a little bit. He's just like, okay, you know what? I lost that stock on my own terms. Now I have to figure out what I need to do in order to win this. And I, I just like based on the fact that Dill was using so many moves, just being very aggressive, I think he maybe got a little bit overconfident. You know, when you see Dill when he's in a very win, like, you know, really respecting what his opponent can do, it's very slow, very meticulous. He cuts off options very deliberately. Whereas near the end there, he's throwing out these nares and, you know, throwing the gyros. He was covering a lot of options, but it wasn't quite as deliberate as we normally see an in-control Dill do. As we see him go back to Battlefield, just like game one, but this is a different circumstance and maybe a different Utopian Ray that he's going to be fighting against, one with a little bit more conviction in all of his moves as we see like just a couple berating dash attacks, not letting, not losing the fear that comes with Rob's Nair, despite how good it is on shield, it can't beat Palutena's shield. Dash attack, did you get him? All right, hasn't really been, he's been getting back to the ledge pretty okay. He did lose that last game very brutally in that exact situation. So maybe he's figuring out a better way of dealing with uh, getting to the ledge against Ray Palutena. 
All right, Dill trying to go for a different option, knowing he got punished for the air dodge there. That time a little bit more delayed as it was a back air, though it was still a bit, uh, still not, uh, didn't land. I think that overall Dill is slowing the match down a little bit. I, think, I feel like he's the one who's doing that. And he's being more deliberate with how he's recovering even. You know, you can see that he has an exact game plan in mind of how he's going to mix it up this time around. And I think that's going to do well for him. Yes, he's down right now, but we've seen that in general. Tobin Ray is the one who can struggle to take the stocks. The stage might be, might be coming back to bite Dill a little bit because with these platforms, while Ray doesn't go for the fancy teleport uh, stuff that Frozen seems to have made it made it made himself a name for. It gives option. It gives a better high recovery option for Palutena, in addition to Ra. So while he may have forced his jump with the top earlier in that edge guarding sequence, the teleport was much more free in order to go to the platform and get past uh, Rob's uh, edge guard edge ledge trapping sequence. All right, this should this be, be huge. It. Oh, he gets the recrap. Another one, and this time the up air connects, that should be more than enough. Utopian Ray, once again, is having to make a comeback. And Dill, yeah, already you could see that he's being a, he's not throwing out moves the same way he was in that game three. He realizes that he needs to still respect Utopian Ray, even when he was up 2-0. It wasn't quite enough. So here, yeah, I love this. He's throwing out these moves, and he's up, kind of threatening his zone, but he's not going too crazy. Oh, that was such a great, like, it, it was a great mix-up, though it didn't it quite work, because he's dashing forward, like, in order to chase down uh, the uh, the dashing away that Rob is doing, but he used the tilt version of Explosive Flame as that Nair eventually does take it. So, these that players are pulling out things that they haven't exactly shown each other now, and it's a little bit, shows a little bit more of that fighting spirit that the Utopian Ray has uh, awoken in the last game. Good Nair. I, I do like this, the way that Utopian Ray is playing. You notice that he takes incremental stage advantage. The way that Rob plays, where he'll charge up a projectile, throw out a beam, he has to lose a little bit of stage in the process. And just eventually, all that means is that he puts himself in the corner. Oh, now he's taking more of the aggressive stance. He is, he does have this lead. Uh, yeah, he doesn't want to let Ray get comfortable, and that's exactly what he's looking here, dropping through these platforms with fares, like knowing that like, uh, Dill is playing on the opposite side of the stage, so all it takes is a little bit of time before Dill realizes that he needs to come forward a little bit and needs to start taking this center stage back since this center stage zone is so important on Battlefield. That was a great punish on the back air. A lot of people can struggle to punish that move, but with Palu Dash attack, definitely got the hit in, and now we have a pretty much neck and neck dead even game. This could be really big though. He went for that huge up smash, didn't quite work out. This time he's going to, oh! Oh, oh my god! He spawns at the last second, saving his life. For 133%, I think up throw might even be able to do it underneath those platforms. Although Rob grab is pretty, pretty hard to land. It, it may not be, it may not be as phenomenal as Palutena, but with top it's so hard to just really walk around since the, that top is so active. But we see Rob on ledge and he gets beaten back, tries to challenge Palutena's back, tries to challenge his way on stage and Palutena's back here says, no, 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 not today. You see, uh, up air? Oh, oh did you just get... So Ray is always more inclined to finish his combos horizontally instead of vertically. Because while he would be able to stack up to almost 50% with double up air, he instead is wants to set up his ledge trapping scenario since he knows that's where he's going to get the most uh, opportune times. I mean, notice how much damage he's been getting, how the stocks have been taken. It's all been at the ledge. The ledge play has been improved so much from Utopian Rage. It's from games two, one and two to three and four here. It's the point where, oh, so look fair. at that. This is, all right. It's a very scary situation for Utopian Ray. He's been trapped at the ledge. We've been talking about how Ray has been really good at ledge trapping, but Dill has been just fantastic at it the entire game set. Consistently, each and every game has been brutal for Ray to get off the ledge. This match has been like, one heck of a slugfest throughout the entire thing, but both these players are starting to like really get into the get into the mode where all right we got to transition to this final kill because Ray's got feeling a little bit of pressure he's on his last stock of potentially of winner's side 
So there's a there's a certain edge, and he's got to figure out how do I kill the robot, which is a little bit more difficult than it seems. With oh, he missed top. He didn't have it. Oh, that Another explosive flame trade. trade. I would honestly say that's perfectly. Uh, never mind. There it is. I was gonna say that was okay for Dill, but yeah, that extra damage and putting him above right meant that up air was uh, absolutely a finisher in that situation. Do you think? I don't think we're gonna see Battlefield again. No, I. Uh, after how flexible Ray played around those platforms, I wouldn't think he would go back to this stage. I'm, he, we might see something like Town and City. I know that's a common comfort pick for Rob. Also, nice. Let's go, Norman. Hey. He's rooting for Ray, too. Rooting for the reverse 3-0, which very well could happen. Yeah, that would be an amazing way to kick off this winner's side top eight. And more to come with this stacked amount of players that are even still in losers. Guys like Stocktaker and Sinji powering their way through bracket, even on the loser's side. And yes, Venia sitting on the other with Vivi as well, like no slouch. Okay, yes, the loser of this match, by the way, faces off against Stocktaker. Yeah. And that's... <laughs> to go from, like, guaranteed third to having to fight Stocktaker for fifth? That's a rough one. That's a rough one. They're one game away from being in winner's finals. Either one of them could be... Moving on, and this game, this last game, is what it all comes down to. We've seen how dominant Dill was on the early thing, but we've also seen that shift, how Ray has adapted really well. But I would not discount Dill for pulling something out at the last minute in that game five situation to actually take this. If we are going to be seeing Battlefield again, it wasn't the stage that was limiting him. He just maybe made some questionable calls in his own mind, and so the stage run back is going to happen. Yeah, that was such phenomenal spacing because he was able to get his nair to fair conversion and while landing that fair, he picked up his top for even more threatening, threatening damage on board. Playing a lot, it's like, it, as we as the set's going on, you've mentioned it repeatedly, he slowed down even more, starting to respect Ray's like un, oncoming surge. And now we see this really grounded play style now from Dill. And it's gotten him a lead thus far, but a nair out of shield grabs big body making it uh, easy to land that that move. And you'll notice just how punishing a single mistake is. He kind of just sort of misspaced his forward there and he took all of this damage for it. Oh, uh -oh. Chaney went across the stage and he gets it into the gyro up smash combo. That is huge. And already, like, that was 18% from those two hits off the ledge. I think that Dill is starting to feel much more comfortable this time around. Topian Ray did make a super big comeback in that game three, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do it twice against Bill here. With how this with how his current state is going, though, he's built a lot of damage and narrowly avoiding the fully charged laser at his favorite position, standing on ledge. A Palutena's dream. God, and it's... It's like rising from pla his platform play has been super good in these past two games because whether he's going to fall through it or run off it is such a it, like it's a simple 50 50 but a powerful one given how good Palutena's forward air is. That air is not enough, but explosive flame also he's living through that as well 157%. He's now on the ledge once more, and he finally, wow, after all of that, he's back to the stage, he's back to neutral. Let's see if Dill can get some more damage. A back throw off stage could lead to some really big things. But the back air from Utopian Ray just cleaning things out. 50% is all that he's taken. That's not the worst position to be in, but that does mean that he is forced to approach, and if Dill wants to, he can play more of this patient game and punish those tiny mistakes as he gets too aggressive. Ray hasn't gone to ledge since like midway through game four. So whether this is just some godlike conditioning or like Ray's planning something devious, we'll have to see whether it w whether either comes to fruition. But I just thought it would be something to note. Oh, he wanted to grab that gyro, but just missed the timing in that few like extra like split second. Lost him a lot of pressure that he could have been exerting possibly. That shield got eaten up by that neutral air. We haven't seen a super early stock off stage yet, but there's always that threat of deep Palu back air, Palu down air, especially if Dill gets too comfortable just floating off stage. 
The, the shot was meant to snipe the platform, but he fell through it just in time, and there comes the neutral air, converting into the upper. He, that was just narrowly by the skin of his teeth, missing that up air. He went for the ledge trap. Oh, that could have been huge for Dill, but he misses the punish on that up beam, and now he has to find another way to clean out the stock. Yes, it's 143, but if you're Rob, this is one of the difficulties uh -oh. of the character, is finding those kills from neutral. As you can see, he's being put on the ledge. He'll hit him with like a forward air that no, doesn't jumped. finish it. Yeah, that jump fair was uh, something that Ray had been scouting out a little bit earlier in the game, and another bad time it was picked once again and beating out by Powhatan's back air. 160, he's still living, looking for that kill. There you go, Sledge. Neutral air is not enough even now. The stage perhaps backfiring on Dill just a little bit. Battlefield does have the biggest, some of the biggest blast zones in this game, and that is helping Utopian Ray survive, but sniping him with the beam all the way up there. Trained US robot. Over 100 confirmed kills. I'm sorry, that was a dated one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, got, I appreciate it. <laughs> Man, he okay. Uh, now it's time for Ray to get get aggressive as he pushes through and going for the maximum damage that he possibly can and chasing him down even further. What a snipe! Oh, I love the option coverage with that, knowing that the down air would cover a two frame and so he would have to recover high. And oh man, look at this! The, the only one percent separating these two, and honestly, I'd say that the kill percents have been relatively equal for the most part. Both of them are surviving to numbers on this battlefield so we might have a little bit more of a game thank you we might have a little <laughs> bit more of a, of, a, of a game to see here there's still t room to evolve and change dill is the one who still has the lead even now but a good neutral air putting him off stage both, both these players testing the limits of their own mental dexterity how is rob going to get off the ledge another jump if if uh dill is going to lose an early stock it's going to be from at the ledge yes I 100% agree. Ooh, that might be it! He var nared in st instead of going for the bear. That might be like throwing, just the game slipping through his fingers as that's where Ooh. the top. Oh no. 140, but Rob can live just a little bit longer as he waits and jumps back to the. Uh, careful oh. roll. One careless roll and one careless jump. He might gets him! The back air. 150. Just can't connect it though. Uh oh. He hasn't grabbed Ludge yet. Oh, Invincible, he runs out so fast, and Powhatan is down to last so long. He's going deep. <laughs> this is... We're hoping we're him again and again. 127 now. Ray is the one off stage. Neutral air. He gets the ledge before he can do anything. A down, down smash, smash but that would do it. And there it is, Ray, getting the reverse 3-0 comeback. Just doing so well throughout. Figuring out exactly what he did wrong, and he just adjusted after two amazing comebacks. Both Game 3 and Game 5 were comebacks. Yeah. I'm, he absolutely earned that set win, and he has earned his spot in Winner's Finals where he's going to have to face off against the uh, champion of the next match we're about to see. That's uh... a... <laughs> All right. That's such... What an amazing, like, just... Like, it, you all saw it. You all saw just how he found his way, especially in Game 3. He loses his stock to his own volition, and he finds his center. He found the... He saw into the code. He, whatever other movie reference that I want to make that I can pull out of my ass. <laughs> he, he did it. He, he, he is a wizard. <laughs> uh, so what next is a... I got to do it. It's a Pokemon battle. Oh.